Our favorite verse for today was submitted by Nancy Eichmann, and it's 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58. And Paul writes, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Now, the Apostle Paul was writing this letter to some Christians living in the city of Corinth, a city that was known for its immorality. In fact, there was a word coined in the Greek which meant to behave like a Corinthian, meaning an immorality and drunken debauchery. And so it's to Christians living in that kind of ungodly culture that Paul gives three instructions. He says, stand firm, let nothing move you, and always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. You know, whenever I read those first two phrases, stand firm, let nothing move you, it always conjures up for me the image of a weather reporter standing in the middle of a hurricane. We've all seen that, right? A reporter standing there, 70, 80 mile an hour winds battering them back and forth, and they're, they're trying to hold their ground. Sometimes their feet slip. They tumble a little bit down the street. You hope they're okay, but it's, it's a bit comical also, right? Well, if you've read Paul's letter to the Corinthians, you know that some of the members of that church were unstable spiritually. They were prone to jealousy and quarreling. There were there was one man who was sleeping with his stepmother. Uh, they were filing lawsuits against one another. Some were apparently having sex with pagan temple prostitutes. Some were getting drunk when they came together for a meal in celebration of the Lord's Supper. So Paul is saying these words to some Christians, very unstable at times. He's saying, listen, you need to plant your feet firmly in the ground. Let nothing move you. Don't let the culture blow you around. In other words, the truth is non-negotiable. Uh, morality is not negotiable. Let nothing move you. How? Well, in context, it comes from being firmly rooted. It comes from being firmly rooted in, in the gospel, in the resurrection, in the word of God, in a community of believers and in prayer, in all of those things that are important in a Christian's life. Next, he writes, you always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Remember, Scripture teaches that whatever we do, we're to do it with all of our might as if we're doing it for the Lord. So that means whether you're scrubbing last night's dishes or you're changing a dirty diaper or you're running a business, it's the work of the Lord. It's all for his glory. And he says at the end here, why do all this? Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. In other words, there will be a resurrection because of the promise of eternal life. Nothing you do is in vain. What we do matters. It matters to God. It matters to the world. It makes an eternal difference. Would you bow with me now for a word of prayer? Father, we thank you for the hope of the resurrection. For the fact, Father, that everything we do in this life does matter for all eternity. And I pray today that we would keep that in mind as we go about our life, that we might do everything for your glory. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. God bless you today.